also work with small family-owned wineries, and you know, wine clubs for us are what really sustain us. We have an uh, incredible wine club here, and we're one of four locations in Washington State for Mary Hill. Okay. Um, we have another one in Vancouver, Washington. We have another one in Spokane, and then we have our main winery, which is just about an hour-ish south of Yakima. Um, sits up on the cliffs of the Columbia Valley Gorge, looking over towards Oregon. It's an absolutely beautiful space. And the river flows right below it. You look down towards Mount Hood. If you're ever driving down there, definitely stop by. Okay. Um, but for us, serendipity, um, Craig and Vicki, the owners, really believe their kind of entire journey with Mary Hill has been serendipitous. You can see kind of a credo here. It's oh, the discovery, now notice it. connections, inspirational moments, <laughs> <and> lasting experiences. <laughs> um, so it seemed fitting that kind of one of the most popular blends would be named serendipity. So this is what would be referred to as a left bank Bordeaux. It is Cabernet Sauvignon dominant. Um, but we also have the other big Bordeaux varietals, so you're going to have Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, and Petit Bordeaux all blended into this. Um, every Clean. year, the, it's very smooth. Every year, the blend will change in terms of its proportions. It'll always be dominated by Cabernet Sauvignon, but as the harvest changes, yeah. allowing our winemaker to change the proportions actually makes for a more consistent wine year to year. Yeah. Um, because maybe Cab Franc's a little too fruity one year, maybe the Malbec's a little bit too acidic, whatever it is, yeah. allowing the winemakers to really sit down, taste, and you know, we've done blending sessions here as a team. It's no simple task to sit down <laughs> because 2% of something can completely change yes, the flavor. Yep. Um, but really, up. After you do blind tasting and, and everything for an hour, you really can't, you really you can't, taste, you can't taste anything, taste anything else. <laughs> you need like a big steak or something to wash it out. Um, and then the other one I poured right next to you, this is our McKinley Springs Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, we do about six, uh, seven different cabs in our portfolio. Um, this one is from a vineyard. This is part of our vineyard series. Um, we have a whole selection of wines uh, that are strictly 100% from the vineyard that we say they're from. Um, so this is really in the portfolio where we showcase kind of the unique terroir and climate of Washington State. It's completely so, different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is rich, bold, super, yeah, super layered, really massive tannic structure on the finish. This comes from a vineyard down in uh, Horace Seven Hills, which is just about 30 minutes past our winery. <laughs> so if you were going to go out the Columbia Valley Gorge, you go Portland, Hood River, and then another hour, and you kind of follow where Horace Seven Hills is. Okay. Um, you got really intense heat out there, so the grapes are always basking in it. Not a ton of rain, and if there is rain, this is all on a hillside slope, so all that water kind of flows off. So again, the grapes are being deprived of what they really want. Yeah. Um, and you got a lot of wind, too, a lot of wind, because... We've had when uh, it's literally taken sides of the winery off the building because Hood River, you can get like 70 mile an hour gusts. That's um, crazy. Because the gorge is a wind tunnel. Um, and so all those conditions create an area where the vines struggle to really do what they want to do. Yeah. What grapes want to do is produce really big, juicy grapes. We don't necessarily want that. We want really thick skin. Gotcha. All those things can hurt that grape into doing thick skin. It's a natural defense mechanism for them. I'm convinced that that phrase, like, when you're going through tough times and you tell your friend, like, to grow thick skin, yeah. convinced that comes from winemaking. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a lot of things that I'm convinced that, like, everything comes from winemaking. Yeah, yeah, all of it does. All, all of the world's greatest philosophers were all just See, yeah, just, yeah, yeah, sitting there just drinking a whole bunch of wine. Absolutely. <laughs> a bottle to themselves. Absolutely. I mean, you, you could not convince me otherwise, but that really thick skin, the, the thicker the skin is, um, the bigger, bolder flavors you're going to get, the more of that kind of mouth drying feeling you're going to get, which is all the tannic acidity, which is when now you want to start playing around with the big fatty meats and those big steaks and ribeye stuff. Yeah. See, I talk about it and then I'm like, I got I to go to the butcher and buy a ribeye tonight. Which one do you like? Which one do you like? I like this one better. The second one? Mm hmm. Mm. Weddings, music, and wine. It's all about wine on this episode. <laughs> Woodenville, Washington, Mary Hill Winery. Beautiful winery also. A lot of people, as you can hear in the background, are talking, drinking, having a good time. The bistro in here as well. The building itself is awesome. And we're here with Mr. Colin, the um, tasting manager, talking with him, showing showing me a whole bunch of wines, giving me a whole bunch of education too. I'm taking this all in. I'm going to listen back to it myself and listen to what he got to say and actually steal a lot of what he's had to say about a bunch of wines and use a lot of his words. So I'm just going to plagiarize the hell out of him. Who else 
guys got on the list for today? Uh, we just literally showed up, and I was like, I'm just going to start walking into places. And that's literally what I just did. <laughs> I just love walked, it. In, walked in here, brother. I didn't I have a plan or at, at all. I mean, I've, I've been all around the world, so I've never really had a plan. I just walk in, so and it always ends up working out. Where's uh, your favorite place you've been? Australia. Nice. From yeah. Where? Uh, Sydney. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, 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 actually, I, um, I DJ'd over there for about a year after I got out the military because I um, ended up getting a medical discharge because I tore my ACL. So I ended up going back in, um, to music and... Sydney reached out to me. I had some friends over there that was like, we got a place for you. I went over there and DJ for almost a year and nice. stayed there. At same. When were you over there? 2001? 2001, okay. yeah. I lived there in 2010 for a year. Okay. All kind of, all East Coast, Sydney, yeah. all the way up to like Cairns and like Surfers. Yeah, yeah I went area. up to Cairns, yeah, because I DJed up there a couple of times because they had like a whole bunch of like festivals. And yeah, stuff you like go to Byron Bay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Iron Bay is like DJ. Yeah, 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 it is. It's Iron Bay is a lot of fun. <laughs> I lived over in Perth. Um, okay. I got started in the wine industry over in Margaret River, which is like, if you're to look at the Australian map, it's like the most southwest boot of Australia that you could possibly go. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also, man, yeah, like, I mean, we, we're on the show right now. I know we're talking about wine, but yeah, tell everybody about yourself, man. Oh, myself, yeah. man? Jeez. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, everyone else will probably tell you more about it. <laughs> I grew up in Southern California. Okay, um, so that's why you know a lot, lot about Cali. I know a lot about Cali. I'm, a, I'm an Orange County boy. My, my uncles got me into wine, and I was like, "Mom, if you ever hear this, I'm sorry." She thinks I got into wine like some like really high end way. It's just, my uncle snuck me wine under the table when I was like 12, 13 years old. So I mean, I that's like, the best way, brother. Yeah, that stuff's not too bad. It's better, it's better than the beer jug. Yeah, exactly. Me, yeah. um, I went to Gonzaga University, which is oh, over nice. in Spokane. You can't so. win a championship, man. Yeah. Dude, they, 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 so get, close, they, they get bro. so close so every close. freaking year, and I go for them too, man. You want, you, 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 you want to? You want like it's tough to call us an underdog. Yeah, too, no, but. because they're a powerhouse now. They just can't get over that. I hump. know, man. It's all right. It's all right. We, we, we've gotten real good at this uh, institution. So <laughs> exactly. It's always next year. Yeah. It's always next year. <laughs> Yeah, man, I went, I went to school there, graduated, when I moved over to Australia. I had the chance to live in Europe for a little bit as well, which nice. was a lot of fun. Um, I did 10 years in Sonoma County in the wine industry, and um, my journey with Mary Hill super, super serendipitous, too. Um, a gentleman who was a club member named Doug, uh, the last winery I was uh, managing the taste room at, he was a member, and he'd always heard me kind of talk about wanting to get back up to the Northwest, and the... Uh, a couple of years prior, I had hosted him and Craig and Vicky, who owned Mary Hill, yeah. um, and they had all talked and kind of remembered me and the hospitality I provided, and so Doug was like, you know, Craig and Vicky have this awesome new project going on in Woodenville, just outside Seattle, Yeah, can I get you in touch with them and just have a conversation, and conversation led to a plane flight up here, which led nice. to an interview, and led to a job offer, and nice. a month after that, we moved up and <laughs> opened, and then four months later, COVID happened. <laughs> That's how it happened for everybody, man. Everything was just going so good for so I many know, people, man. man. And then all of a sudden, bam, yep. everything shuts the fuck down. Well, for us Excuse too. my language. I'm sorry, guys. For us, too, you know, we opened our Vancouver location in early 2019, and then we opened here at the end of 2019. So all things said, like, go good for business. And uh, definitely wasn't the case after that. But we're still here, and we're hanging on, and we got an amazing wine club that supports us, and we always appreciate you guys coming in and yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, this is going to be for you, love. This is your sweet wine to finish on. Sweet wine. So this is Muscat Tonelli. So if you love that, so I already see the smile on her face. <laughs> already see the smile on her face. That's that's all the compliments we need. Just a big smile. Holy crap, man. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> that is really good. Yeah, that, that, that's yours right there. Mm. Wedding's music and wine with sweet wine this time. Mr. Colin. Tasting manager here. You just heard his story. Listen on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Podcast, Podcast Chaser, Pod Chaser, Jo Saving. <laughs> We're gonna be finishing this up right now with Mr. Colin. Appreciate him for being on the show. Tell the people what they need to know, brother, about how to reach out to you guys if you have any online products. Like I said, this plays overseas now, brother. It's gonna keep on, just keep expanding. So man and plug yourself brother <laughs> well you've done a great job already man but yeah if anyone's ever in the Woodenville area we're in 
the Hollywood Schoolhouse, which is one of the most historic buildings on the east side of uh, King County. Uh, we're just on the street from Chateau Saint Michel, which is also one of the most historic buildings. Um, we're open seven days a week, and uh, we have an amazing food program as well. So you got hungry bellies and a hungry soul. <laughs> Wine and food is usually a good thing. It to is, man. <laughs> love it. I love it, Colin. Appreciate you, brother. Team, uh, taste and manager here at Mary Hill Winery. Weddings, music, and wine. This whole episode is just going to be about wine. I'm not even going to play any music. I'm not going to talk about no weddings. We're just going to do all wine. Might be a little bit drunk at the end of the book, but it's, you know what? That's okay. We'll be all right. <laughs> Appreciate you, bro. Tell everybody bye-bye, whatever you need to tell. Cheers, guys. He says cheers to everybody. Like I said, listen on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all major streaming services. J.O. Sabin, which I always love to plug because for some reason I'm very popular in India. But it's the largest Indian streaming service in the world. So thank you for all the Indians and all the Muslims and whoever else is over there in India that's listening in. Appreciate you guys. We've got Mr. Colin, Tasting Manager, Mary Hill Winery, Woodenville. We're going to get the hell up out of here. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Say one more thing. Peace and love. Peace and love. He says peace and love, and he said it with like a question mark. My God, brother. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting out of here. Appreciate you guys. We out. Weddings. With new. This is, is DJ New. The most interesting DJ in the world. Weddings, music, and wine. Wine tour weekend. We are here at the Milbrant Vineyards. Hopefully, we'll be talking with the tasting manager here. He seems to be a little busy. I mean, they look like they're kind of understaffed, so he's running around. But I'm doing a little bit of wine tasting, starting with the States Vignet 2019. Streaming always on Spreaker.com, also Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all major streaming services, including J.O. Savan. The largest Indian music, largest Indian streaming service in the world. So listen in, listen in, listen in. Tasting the Estates Vignette right here in Millbrant Vineyards here in Wil- Wilsonville, Woodenville. I don't know where the hell, even the hell I'm at. I'm probably already don't drink too much wine. But yeah, Woodenville. This is weddings, music, and wine with new. And look like this is States Beignets with um, the tasting wine that I'm doing right now. Look like it says it's parrot with pad thai, chicken, or salmon with a mango peach salsa. Kindle Mix is the wine maker. I have I didn't get to do a whole lot of research on this because I'm just now seeing it on their you know their um, paper that's here, but. I suppose I've been talking to the team, not team manager, but the tasting manager here. But he's so busy, the assistant manager didn't show up, so he's running around. May not be able to get get the, get a chance to talk to him, but it's okay. Still enjoying the nice weather here in Woodenville. Enjoying like the good wine that people are giving us. And we're going to check out the next vineyard, check out the next winery, wherever the hell we ended up next. But I appreciate you guys listening in. Spotify is going to be available. iHeartRadio. Also, Jio Saban and all the other major streaming services for weddings, music, and wine with Nick. Next up on the list in weddings, music, and wine is 
is the Estates Chardonnay, Ancient Lakes AVA, 100% Chardonnay, lovely Chablis style of Chardonnay, which is a style that the Evergreen Vineyard lends itself to. Kendall Mix is also the winemaker.